I need my monster. Tonight, when I looked under my bed for my monster, I found this note instead. Go fishing. Be back in a week, Gabe. What was I going to do? I needed a monster under my bed. How was I supposed to get to sleep if my monster was gone? I tried to sleep, but it wasn't the same without Gabe. I missed his ragged breathing his nose whistling, the scrabbling of his unclipped claws. How would I ever get to sleep without Gabe's familiar scary noises and his spooky green ooze? It was no use. Gabe would be gone for a week and I just had to have a monster. I climbed quietly out of bed so my parents wouldn't hear me. Grown-ups have some strange idea about monsters under beds knocked on the floorboards, then scrambled back under my covers. I waited nervously. Would a new monster appear? What would he be like? Would his snorting be as cheerful as Gabe's? When I heard some creaking under my bed, I knew that a substitute monster had arrived. Good evening said a low, breathy voice. My name is Herbert, and I will be your monster for this evening. Herbert? What kind of name is that for a monster? You don't sound scary at all. Have you ever even scared a kid before? Well, no, but I read all the best books on the topic. Do you have long teeth and scratchy claws? I asked. No, but I have an overbite. And I'm a mouth breather. Listen. <sighs> Herbert's panting was kind of scary, but it wasn't enough for me. Listen, Herbert, I'm sorry. I just don't think this is going to work. It's nothing personal, but I really need a monster with claws. Piggy, piggy, Herbert complained. As you wish, I'll go. There was some more creaking, then Herbert was gone. Some scratching warned me that the second monster had appeared. Good evening, he said in a high, silky voice. My name is Ralph. I understand you need a monster with claws. If you would please lean over, I will hold out an arm for inspection. I crouched on the edge of the bed, hoping to see a horrible, scraggy arm with sharp, ragged nails. Instead, I was surprised to see sleeky, brushed fur with smooth, shiny claws. Uh, excuse me, I don't mean to be rude, he asked. But is that nail polish on your claws? Oh, yes, it is, Ralph replied. I believe professional monsters should always be well-groomed. I could tell that this was not going to work either. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Ralph, but I need a monster with scary claws. Like Gabe's, I thought. I heard some more scratching, and I knew Ralph was gone. A minute later, a third voice from under the bed rasped, Check out these claws, kid. I gathered my courage and peered over the edge. The claws were impressive jagged and dark and razor sharp. So far, so good. I was a little nervous. Could you stick out your tail? I whispered. Sure, but don't get scared. I peeked through my fingers at the slimy tail slithering over the foot of my bed. That's when I noticed the bow. Are you a girl monster? Of course I am, she snapped. I'm Cynthia. Do you have a problem with that? Um, yeah, I do, I admitted. I definitely need a boy monster. Boy monsters are for boys, and girl monsters are for girls. Everybody knows that. 
Well, aren't you a picky one? She sniffed, and then she was gone. Was I being too picky? No. I knew that my monster needed to be well-clawed and menacing. The whole point of having a monster, after all, was to keep me in bed, imagining all that scary stuff that would happen if I got out. Then I heard some shuffling noise and some slobbering. A fourth monster was under my bed. Hey, my name's Mac. One look at his claws proved that Mac was a big, scruffy boy monster. I shivered. Maybe this one would work out. Those are excellent claws. Do you have a long tail? I leaned over to see. No, my tail is stumpy. Max slurped. But I do have an unusually long tongue. Why would I be afraid of a long tongue? I asked. Oh, I don't know, he said. Tongue to sound terrifying. You never know when I might lick you. I fell back in bed laughing. Well, this is not even going to try to work with me, Mac whined. I held in my giggles. I really don't think you should send me away, he warned. Kids who reject five monsters in one night? I did not reject five monsters tonight, I interrupted. My regular monster went fishing. Fishing, eh? Maybe you just left because you're so picky. Fine, I'm out of here. But I wouldn't expect another monster tonight if I were you. How was I ever going to get to sleep without my monster? I was surprised to hear more creaking under the bed. Loud creaking with scratching. I thought no more monsters were going to appear tonight, I said. Sorry I'm late, kid. Whew, it was Gabe. I thought I would enjoy fishing, but I didn't, he explained. Those fish scared too easy. No challenge at all. You, however, are challenging, my friend. You're almost too old to be scared of monsters. You keep me on my toes. Ah, toes, a delicious snack. The bed quivered as Gabe's stomach rumbled with hunger. Now, if you don't mind, I'd like to start the evening off with an ominous puddle of drool. I peeked over the edge of the bed. Green ooze spread soundlessly from underneath. Then the bed trembled as Gabe unfurled his spiked tail. He was daring me to guess where he might pop up. I shivered. So you had some substitute monsters tonight, Gabe said, sharpening his claws on the bedpost. Were you scared? Then Gabe started tapping. I could tell he wanted to know if I still needed him. No other monster can scare me like you, I giggled, diving under my covers and pulling them up tight. Through the blanket, I heard Gabe's soft, comforting snorts. Ha! I knew it. We're made for each other, he growled. When my blanket started to slip off the bed, I knew Gabe was ready to eat. Now, if you could please stick out your foot, I'd like to snibble on your old pinky. I yanked my blanket back up and scrunched my feet so Gabe couldn't get them. No toes tonight, but you can have this, I offered, pushing a pillow off the bed. It didn't even hear it hit the floor. Gabe was back. The ooze was perfect. Everything was back to normal. I shivered again. I'd be asleep in no time.